the operatic section. Ah, 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 the operatic section. Hi there, my name's Andy, and the other chap that you saw in the video there playing Bohemian Rhapsody so well uh, was Dave Calhoun. I know Dave through my work with Waterbear Music College here in Brighton, and Dave was involved in the Bohemian Rhapsody movie as a guitar double, and has also performed in the We Will Rock You theatre show. He's performed on stage with Brian and Rick Wakeman, he taught Rami Malek to play Crazy Little Thing Called Love, and he was also on the set of the movie, uh, on hand to be a hand double in case they needed any close-up of uh, playing the notes on the fretboard. Really cool stuff, he's got many a story to share about that. But this video is all about the detail of Brian May's playing. So I invite you to put the kettle on, make a cup of tea and check out this video, especially, especially from the clip you've just seen. Check out the vibrato that Dave does because it's so fantastic, so expressive. And uh, there'll be some quick links in the description because it is a long video, I know. But I hope you enjoy it and the link to Dave's stuff is in the description below too. Let's enjoy the video. So Bohemian Rhapsody was an amazing... Uh experience i'd never done a movie before mm -hmm. um and the main thing is that the catering on movies is amazing <laughs> so you get fed more than you ever do in rock and roll they, they have a truck called craft which is where they'll just make you any kind of coffee or any juice or whatever you want so we love craft um it was great it, there's um a totally different approach to making movies a lot hanging about a lot of time lot of, of course setting up stuff. the shots and yeah, yeah. everyone having to be ready but waiting for the call you got okay. it. I mean, you'll get there ridiculously early and sit there for hours and hours till after lunch before anything starts some days. So this was during um, when you had to be on set when they were filming the live gig footage. Yeah. And you were ready to be called upon for close-ups or, or for any double shots yep. that, that may be required. Yeah, totally on standby. Mm -hmm. uh, literally like... In the curly wig. In the curly wig. like In uh, the outfits that were authentic to Brian Mayer in the 70s and, and 80s and everything, really cool. So the, the Rami thing came up um, was how we wanted to shoot this scene and he wanted to actually play the guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, initially, because uh, time is always a constraint, mm. you, know? you, you can do so much but you can't work miracles. So it was like, how long have we got to learn these chords? You know? And it was basically a crazy little thing called Love, wasn't it? Which is... I mean, you could have just sent him to my tutorial, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's up on YouTube. But anyway, go ahead, sorry. But it's, you know, you love that song and you think, well, it's D, G, and that's all good. It's the B-flat chord. When you get to B-flat, it's a Isn't whole it? new can of worms, right? I'm sure most people watching this video will, uh, will agree with you there. The one bar chord in a song and it's like, ah, I can't actually, yeah. I can't do this anymore. So you had to coach him through that. Uh, Willem had been having lessons with Brian May to try and nail yeah. that, nail, nail his yeah. technique, but then he also had lessons with you just to check a few things. Yeah, the cool. was great, and um, and he would ask, you know, and he'd say, this is what I've got, is there anything that you think is just, you know, and so he was, um, but the, the attention to detail of all the actors involved, really, and especially Rami, because not only are they not musicians or guitar players, but they're acting and speaking and walking in character mm. and doing all of this as well. Mm. And you know how much concentration it takes, even when you know what all these chords oh, absolutely. are. And they're doing all that, but in the background, they're also thinking about the movement and the angle and the stance and everything. So so there's data overload, but um, no, they absolutely. retain it somehow. So I didn't want to... Uh, upset that too much. <laughs> no, absolutely. I think I, I've, I've seen quite a lot of the backstage footage and a lot of the interviews and apparently one of the main things that Brian May was, was saying to the guys, uh, um, Willem in particular, was just remember that ego of being on stage and being in Queen. Mm -hmm. Like, don't, you, you've got all the moves, you've actually got the playing by now, just make sure you get the ego on the take because there's a lot of that when you're at a gig mm -hmm. on stage in front of all those people you're 
you're, you're feeling it, you know, make, mm-hmm. make sure you are feeling it mm-hmm. in the moment. Really cool. Um, so that, that's, that's amazing. And what I want to focus this video on is not how to sound exactly like Brian May. We don't have Brian May's guitars here. I'm using a Victory Sheriff 22, and that, that's what um, you're going through, Dave. We're not recreating exactly the sound using the same gear. What we're looking at is the playing and what is great about it and what can the average guitar player mm. sort of take from Brian May because it's without doubt iconic songs and iconic playing. Mm-hmm. There is something about it that connects with people and something which kind of transcends, as this movie is showing, mm. it transcends just a rock band from the 70s and 80s. Mm. It, it becomes something else entirely. Um, so you have a, a bit of a list, I believe, to work through. Yeah. So Top five, as it were. I think, and, and the thing is, overall, is with Brian style, he plays the tune. Most of the solos are start with a very similar version of the vocal something, melody. Something, the melody. And so they're not, they are solos, but they kind of go off into their own little area. But the, the melody is absolutely king in mm-hmm. king and queen, if that makes sense. <laughs> absolutely. Um, so uh, a couple of things first? technique wise. Well, that, we got a close up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would um, just king hold George. it. I would, I would hold it just, just where you are. We'll there get we a photo are. of these later. Yeah. But we essentially have, is this a sixpence? That's it, we're rich. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what we're using instead of a pick. Kind which, of thin. But there's a couple of things with this. One, it's absolutely solid, so there's absolutely no giving it solid. at all. Yeah. Which I, from researching and, and watching videos of, of Brian over the years, I believe that's so that you know anything that he does with his fingers transfers directly to the string. Mm-hmm. There is nothing lost in just the bend of the pick. Exactly. And the thing that we were focusing on just before we were filming, before a press record, was the serration on the yeah. side yeah. is what is so, used to really try and get some high yeah. frequency. So do you want to demo that? So we have a treble booster and um, we're going through the cha- channel two essentially. So let's just show you, the only time the volume would be opened up on 10 is if you're playing a single note and you get to this. And from there, if you pull that right back to just above off, you suddenly get this. Now, depending on how hard you pick that, that can go from an overdriven tone to as clean as this. Now that is a staggering difference, I think, for for people who are searching for a tone or a sound. You know, if you play that open A chord again, that is the classic rock overdrive sound, typically. But, uh, you know, you, using a coin here, but essentially playing triads, a D triad, yeah, and a then an A triad, to a G. it suddenly sounds, you know, it has somewhat of that clean strat tone. So, um, just, and this is with everything on on the rock sound, on I'll the solo sound essentially. Demonstrate. So this is just a, I use really thin picks, the, the, the opposite of that. Yeah, yeah. But you'll hear that, that it's almost like um, a duller sound altogether. And I'm, I'm going to try and it's play lost, it. No, it has lost that high end, definitely. And it that will be that sparkle. Absolutely. And the way that will cut through... It's like through you've changed guitar or changed pickups. Yeah, it's, it, it, that, the way that will cut through with everything else going on will s- sit in a certain frequency that, that gives it a space of its own. So you hear that like glass like? Absolutely. And I'm being incredibly gentle. <clears throat> Obviously. Yeah, so so picking uh, dynamics, you were saying, is a massive part of yeah. this. So let me ask you this then, just just thinking of the audience in mind, um, you you have essentially kept your sound there on the lead guitar setting, yeah. ready to turn the volume up and play the yeah. solo Bohemian yeah. Rhapsody. Why would you choose to do that back off the volume over um, having a rhythm and lead and, yeah. and, and other sounds? In those days, you had you didn't have channel switching amplifiers. Sure, yeah. You had one setup, and I think that over the years, adapting to be able to get all the tones that you want from clean sounds to rhythm sounds by using what you had, which was this volume control, mm-hmm. um, if that establishes the sound, the style, then it could have been changed later. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you could have every different channel switching variation, Bradshaw system, whatever has all been spoken about. But ultimately, you get so used to doing what you do, and it becomes your sound mm-hmm. that 
why would you ever want to change it? Exactly, and there are all, all these extra little harmonics or just qualities that if you don't use the same methods, you can't replicate. You don't get it. And, and you're talking details. It's all about the minute details, because as you said, everyone can get close. Yeah, yeah. But close isn't the real thing. <laughs> exactly, which is why we... So I mean, I saw Queen and Adam Lambert last year, actually, yeah. in Barcelona, right. and it was amazing to then go and watch the you know, um, videos of him talking about his live gear while he was... The, the rig rundown, basically. Yeah, yeah, OK. He talks so much in depth about why they choose to do certain things mm. and, and just trying to really replicate this live, wherever they are in the world. Quite mm. amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what else do you have other than... Sort OK. Of, I guess we summarise that as dynamics. So we've got that. Things. That's... I mean, really, dynamics is a very, very big area, it mm. is. And the volume control is coming under the dynamic... Umbrella yeah, anyway, I would say that. Because it's just... Um, so I wanted to look at this chord. I'll carry on using sixpence. Which yeah, is, let's do will it. appear all over the place. We've had a look. It's a, it's a D, but over A. It's this mm -hmm. chord. So again, you get that glass-like... But this chord is, you know, the... Um... Exactly. All, all right now, every Keith Richards riff, you know, if we put that into... And it's ACDC. Um, you know, it's, it is AC, it's classic rock 101. So it's not like Queen, Queen weren't, and Brian May wasn't doing that dissimilar stuff to a lot of stuff that was no. popular at the time, but there's a unique voice to it. And one of those is, you know, as, as basically done, done there with, with Amateur Fall, yeah. stepping it up the neck. <laughs> But you're instinctively there as soon as you hit this A chord, and at any point where you can, vibrato. you're adding this vibrato. Do you want to talk a little it's bit point about three. Okay. vibrato? Point three. Vibrato should have been point one, really. Well, yeah, but it's it's all good. Um, vibrato. Let's okay. let's go for it. So I think there's a certain way that it's a it's a beautiful, graceful approach to vibrato, and it's all to do with the speed and the tempo of the track as to the mm. tempo of the vibrato. So it's not every so player. There's a variation has, of it. And it's and it's a, for a musical reason, and so you're just trying to find this. If I look at say Hammer to Fall, that opening, <laughs> it's the top note, and it's getting. Like, Vibrato. Do you want to do a, just a couple of the notes that you did there? The, the, a couple of the vibrato notes. Yep. It's a, yeah, it's sort of bend up slowly first, and then like, ooh, it's got like a curve. Like a, yeah. That vocal approach. And then, so when you get to the higher string. Obviously, you have to vibrato slightly differently so you don't pull off the edge of the fretboard, so mm. it's more of a tighter kind of uh, um, wave to it. So it's sort of a bend, it's a... They're, they're bends, I think of it like it gets to the point of the pitch and then... And then you start, yeah, until you get there. But never goes sharp above the notch, so... I think the important thing is everybody mm. should have an absolute signature vibrato and um, like you said Angus Young or Jeff Beck or, or they all do Brian don't they but, but again we're wanting to take something from a from a player learn something from it and that's something that I absolutely need to need to study a lot more actually mm. it's such a signature of that plane and I, I want to acquire it to be able to have mm. that voice for sure mm. um, is there another one um, another example of, of vibrato yeah or, so or the next one gonna... we'll look at crazy little thing called love cool because here you've got like a standard rock and roll approach mm -hmm. but it's not coming out in a standard rock and roll way mm.
I gotta be cool Relax When you Hit on my tracks Take the back seat And try Take a long ride On my motorbike Until I'm ready Here's a little thing Come on I think from that era, very few players used their little finger at all. Um, you mm -hmm. look at Clapton from that era mm -hmm. and players of that era, and it was always stretching the third finger. And Which is done by that, um, when your finger's on an angle so you can get that stretch. Exactly. And, and so Brian May did use the little finger quite a lot, but only when in, you know, in very sort of specific situations. So something like that. When you go, you get a little mm -hmm. kind of tone there. Jeff Beck does something similar. So Trouble as well. And it's just got a little. It's like the limitation, the the yeah. Note. It's it's got a rise to all the notes so rather than rather than this style. Well, you could go. It just doesn't have that. It lacks the yeah, all the express sass or whatever it is that's, that's on the. Mm -hmm. um, so those details of how you actually play it, I think that's what makes you start to sound like exactly like it and not nearly like it. Obviously got Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Um, so it had to be really. Um, now I want to fast forward to something I was. I was. I just checked it out this morning because uh -huh. um, I had to make sure. But when you get to the almost the end, and this is another technique, and this is something I've seen when I work with Brian. Um, this sort of technique. Which is clearly seen on the music video. Yeah. I mean, live footage, and but even on the music video, you can see this, this sort of tapping. The Borat video clearly shows a, a sliding move, but I hear Well, okay. not, not going up, but that's... Not, too, not as much. And then, so you can get the vibrato of it. Yeah, just if you sort listen to that note, it's pitch. like here. Mm. So it's like. That's definitely. Yeah, you know, I've definitely heard that now, before. This is a, 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 a seventh <clears throat> arpeggio, a C seventh arpeggio, but it's all on one string. Mm -hmm. And I hear the first bit as being this. And this is where we're fortunate enough to, to see a bit of that in the movie. If you want to get the right note, that's bulletproof. That's easy. Whereas easy. this, <laughs> that's a lot more right? To go. But it's got a little. It's got that cry to it. It's a hell of a spot. That it's a real. Sp it's done yeah. the probably on the vibrato though, right? Just the type I, of. I it. think it's just you don't hear the knot bend. Yeah, the, the one out of it probably gives it away. I've done a tutorial for the main, the, the first solo. Mm -hmm. um, shall we have a demo of that now yeah. and see what you can yeah, you can add to yeah. the way that I play it? Really, yeah, I'm sure you'll okay. enlighten me on something. <laughs> So there's a couple of little bits on it. Um, it's always open to a bit of interpretation, but one of the things, when I used to play this in the show, my- So this was in We Will Rock. This is in We Will Rock. So if anybody ever saw the show, I didn't. I did it a few times. I was uh, depping for Laurie Wisefield, who was a principal. Um, but um, I was the first guitarist 
to do the solo on his first night as a deaf. Okay. <laughs> and uh, that's a very lonely place out there on your own little kid with your guitar. <laughs> and um, I know a few What well, year was this, just in case anybody this has seen 2000, this? Uh, I think about 2008, around okay. the, the Dominion. And I also went out to um, Zurich and did it for a little while when it started there. But uh, normally they don't let... It's not a, it's a, a baptism of fire, and it's not a nice place to be. Um, but for some reason, because all the pressure's on you to sort of nail on, it. And, and what what it is that the, the difference is, when you're doing the whole show you, in London specifically, you were up in a, a crow's nest scaffold at the side of the stage, and half the band were on this side of the stage, and half the band were on the other side of the stage, and the MD is on a little black and white two inch monitor it's a really strange experience so he's waving away and giving you cues <laughs> and you're watching and trying to read the chart and then at the end the lead guitar player r goes down the ladder literally and gets led by a roadie with a torch and given another guitar at the bottom of the stairs and right. all this kind of stuff because you're going to go onto the front of the stage to do the solo so yeah. you're the only musician that would be on the stage right so all of that is a little bit weird because suddenly you know, every, it's a totally different environment. You're walking out to the stage with mm. the audience. Um, so in that situation, obviously, you make sure that you're going to play the right notes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. the most important thing. Don't worry about are exactly... Are suddenly, the, like, it's that guy. <laughs> yeah, well, like, you know, if, if it's the feel of it or the dynamic or the... Yeah. Yeah, right. Get, <laughs> right note is a good good place to start. And, and um, so I, I had had a way of playing it that I knew I kind of eight times, nine times out of ten, it was going to be the right notes in the right order, hopefully. What's it going? It's mad, you know. You talk about, you know, on in the moment. The amount of times just playing that with a coin for the first time makes you doubt yourself. It's incredible. Is there anything else from let's Bohemian keep, yeah, let's Rhapsody? Let's keep going. We were just going to go over that one, um, so we'll, we'll kind of carry on with that. We, we've got the vibrato straight off the thing. Um, now this bit. So I hear. So that doesn't. Oh, go, okay. That, that, it hits straight on that. So I think there's a bit of a shift there. So you actually shift up. Now, now this bit, say what I was talking about in the show, I would play. Only because one position. in that position, you're not going to. Yeah, that the slide, yeah. Now here's the bit that... Is uh -huh. There's a little double back. Which is just a little hammer on pattern. It's exactly the same pattern twice. It's actually really... It's just repeating. Yeah, it's... And then again... Mm -hmm. That's all, all it is. Um, this little bit here. So lyrical, isn't it? It's, it's that's what I mean about floating. It's, yeah. like, it's not. Mm. It's, yeah. You know, and I'm just trying. Which is to, where the guitar face is coming from. The guitar from. face is absolutely <laughs> everything. But I'm trying to, you know, in in terms of an acting, I'm just <clears throat> imagining that sound and trying to detach bum, bum, my bum, fingers bum. from it and 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 listen for what that vibrato does. Quite brass like. Bah, 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 bah. But yeah, it's like the end of um, the Beatles track, Penny Lane. The, the trumpet, the piccolo course, trumpet, yeah, it does yeah, that yeah. kind of staccato yeah. run, and it's so musical. And and then the last bit, um, so that I think you pretty much said that when it goes, uh, so there. Now 
that was always a. I, I always played it on the on the G going 15, 17, 18. So I like, go like one, two. Trill. Play, play me the, main, the, the Wayne's World bit, the head back. So, the way I would play. listen to the recording it's very easy to hear where the g string or the d string is that's the one that you can tell so if you hear the twang of the g yeah, string you know that the position's yeah. moved um and if you listen to that uh that's where it is on the recording but as you said it was laid out and dropped the sections so um i can't remember exactly how i played live but when I was doing the film, if it was in the studio one, I thought, well, I'll get him to play it there because that's where it's played okay. on that version. I hear... Which comes back to that three-finger blues style. Yeah, so you've got and if you the notes almost on the recording because there's a clunk going on so you mm. kind of get it but it's not so it's okay. and it gives it a little groove that's um mm. that's that's how i hear it anyway absolutely no that's um, great but it's high risk <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah this one position what can go wrong yeah. a little slide and suddenly everyone else is head banging and you're like where am i but I think it comes from that idea of not using the little finger so much. Yeah, so if you I kinda... so There is a groove there, don't Because it's got that boop bap it's a bit, a bit more sticky and it sort of, uh, it snatches at the high notes a bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I did that slide, doesn't make it. So, uh... There's a tone there, that's so the B flat to E flat. Love it. It's, get, it's, it's the time and you've got a little bit of that. Yeah. It's got da 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 ga ga. It's a slight push on it. <laughs> I'll, I'll do a quick bonus. Go on then. Which was the Freddy rhythm technique of. Oh, of course, it's this, color. right? So this is. Yeah, and this is a big thing for me, actually, because okay. it, it tends to be a bit square. <laughs> Whereas Black Freddie had this dynamics. lovely front end like this. It was like almost all the hand was going like that. Okay. And it gives it like a wonky lopsidedness, which grooves like... <laughs> And if you listen carefully on the recording, on the second one, you almost hear this. It's like the bottom of the chord. It's not. Okay. It's. Oh, it's the last bit yeah. is backwards. How you wouldn't. Well, expect. it's just on these strings. It's just sloppy, but it <laughs> sounds amazing. It gives it a good. And 
is that the way you talk? Yeah, that's it. so I, I watched the live eight. That's how he's doing it. He would go from one. Yeah. Because there is obviously this way of playing C to G like that. Yeah. Which is very ergonomic and I use all the time, but that's the long-winded approach and that's okay. the way most people do it. So and if you just go back to playing it with a pick, it feels kind of lumpy somewhere. Yeah, you know? just clear, just <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. A bit there, but, no, that's cool. Um, well, there's a few, but this is the anecdote of the movie. Okay. Which was, um, so I'd spent a lot, long time, obviously, with Rami, and I went to the premiere with my wife, Jay, and uh, I walked, they had this big party after the thing, um, and I walked in and I met a guy called Andy Mackay, who I've known for years, a producer, writer, and I'd done sessions for him. We did Network East, he did, did a version of Kashmir with like an Indian orchestra and stuff. He's based out in... Um, Mumbai. Anyway, his go girlfriend, might be wife or might be wrong, Menika Das, Menika Das, um, is like, ah, Menika, they went, Dave, what are you doing here? She said, I, I'm in the movie. I went, really? She said, yeah, I'm Freddie's mum. And because they'd made her up to look so old, because she's, oh, you know, wow, so, of course. so Freddie's mum is Menika Das. Wow. And, uh, and then I realised that, so she was doing a John Baez track for a movie a couple of years ago. And Andy asked me to come and coach you, you see. Ah. So not only have I taught Freddie, but I've taught his mum as well. <laughs> Fantastic. I like it. There we go. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, there you go. And I guess on the... Um, I'd, I'd love to kind of wrap it up there. Can we just finish <laughs> up the two the two other songs, which were We Will Rock You? Yeah, I think that's all we had. We Will Rock You we, and We Bo Will Rock, rock You and Bo Rap. Yeah, OK. So we'll play through Let's those. have a go. We Will Rock You. Go and give us this... Uh... Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So one of the things here that um, this is where the fingers. I it's like I yeah. So you've still got that ringing out as a drum, say. Yeah. Third finger flick up. Well, I picked the first one with the coin. Then. That's where I get. Yeah, yeah. So obviously you hear it there. So that's just, um, I mean, and it's so driven and compressed. And getting this. That's the extra 5%. Rock and roll. And the extra 5% on the Bohemian Rhapsody first solo, and we'll leave it okay, there. Okay, let's go from the... To the operatic section. Ah, 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 the operatic the section. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining thank me. That's you. been it's properly fab, and we'll link to all your socials and your YouTube channel in the description below. Make sure you subscribe to Dave, and uh, yeah, thank you for coming down. Thank you very much, and I hope it's been. I don't know anything about Queen really, but <laughs> it's just what I've picked up along the way. Rock and roll, man. That's great stuff.